and elaborate how the habit of referring to astrology and numerology leads to shirk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Quran, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was commanded to say, وَلَوْ كُنْتُ أَعْلَمُ الْغَيْبَ لَسْتَكْثَرْتُ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ وَمَا مَسَّنِيَ السُّوءِ Have I known the unseen? لَسْتَكْثَرْتُ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ I would have made all the right choices which will give me plenty of goodness. وَمَا مَسَّنِيَ السُّوءِ have I known the unseen, no harm would have touched me. I remember this ayah, especially whenever I see the commercial, like in the States, they offer the first time the palmist to read your palm for free. Or if you call, they give you the first five minutes for free. I said to myself, subhanAllah, if this guy claims that he can tell the future, and read the unseen of others and tell them what is good for them and what is bad and what is hidden for them at least he could have been able to help himself because if I know anything about the unseen I would at least in the stock market buy the shares <laughs> which I know that tomorrow their values their worth will double or triple and I would sell whenever I know that tomorrow I would lose. But this is not happening. It's all wild guesses. And in Surah Al-Jinn, the jinn, after listening to the recitation of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they said, إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا يَهْدِي إِلَى الرُّجْدِ فَآمَنَّا بِهِ وَلَنْ نُشْرِكَ بِرَبِّنَا أَحَدًا said, we've heard an amazing Qur'an. It guides to the straight path, to the right guidance. So we believed in it. And we're not going to commit shirk anymore. We will not associate with Allah any in worship anymore. Among their confessions in the ayah, وَأَنَّا كُنَّا نَقْعُدُ مِنْهَا مَقَاعِدَ لِلسَّمَّعَ فَمَنْ يَسْتَمِعِ الْآنَ يَجِدَ لَهُ شِهَابَ الرَّصَدَ we used to take seats in the heaven, in the holy heaven, when Allah the Almighty will give the commands to the angels to execute them. Somebody will be born, somebody will die, somebody will have an accident. So the jinn used to overhear the writing of the angels. And they would take some valid informations, 100% concerning the future. Then they will share it with one of the the Kohan, astrologists, palmists, fortune tellers, soothsayers, you name it. If they share something concerning the future, which is true, because they heard the angels writing that they have to execute this command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah the Almighty ordered them to do it. So when they take this information and they share it with this fortune teller and he announces that an earthquake measures that much will hit the city or this town or this team would win the Super Bowl or this wrestler would win the game and it is true. So that people will believe in this person that he knows the future, he knows the unseen. And it's a human nature. They will go to him, ask him, even though he may fail another hundred times, but because he got it right once, they will continue, they will continue to believe him. That's why the Prophet ﷺ says, whoever visits a kahin, a soothsayer, and he believes in what he says, فَقَدْ not only ashrak. He has indeed kafara bima unzila ala Muhammad. He has indeed disbelieved in the message which had been sent down upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If any 
of us happen to try any of these guys and say, oh, it looks like you are in love. How did you know? Because everyone somehow <laughs> happened to be in love. It looks like you're having a little trouble with your love. <laughs> and who doesn't? <laughs> um, at work, your boss is giving you a hard time. And whose boss is not giving him a hard time? <laughs> so these informations are common informations. When people trust the soothsayers, the fortune tellers, they are foolish. Not only that, if they are Muslims, and now if they know by now that no one knows the unseen whatsoever but Allah. Even in the long hadith of Umar ibn Khattab, who described Jibreel alayhi salam as coming to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, disguising as a traveler wearing exceedingly white clothes with exceedingly black hair. And he asked him the several questions that you all know, Islam, Iman, Ihsan. Then he asked him about as-sa'a, the hour, which is one of the names of the Day of Judgment. What is as-sa'a? The answer of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is most eloquent. What did he say? He didn't say, I don't know. Rather, he said, neither the, the one who's been questioned about it knows no better than the questioner. The one who's been questioned about it knows no better than the questioner. Because later on he explained that the questioner was none but Jibreel alayhi salam. So not even Jibreel knows the timing of the day of judgment. How could you believe a astrologist or a soothsayer or a fortune teller predicting that the end of time will be the year 2020? Even accepting this as a possibility is haram. We got to differentiate between telling the future and, for instance, the weather forecast, because this is based on givings, estimates, and facts. So we got to differentiate between this and that. And finally, whoever visits or takes the advice of any of those who claim to know the future have indeed committed an act of disbelief because the Quran says otherwise. May Allah guide us to what is best.